Okay, in this next section, we're going to learn how to name some simple acids. And there's two main situations we need to be aware of. So let's kind of break them down. So I'll just label these situation number one and situation number two for these basic acids. All right, so the first one, if we look at an acid that looks like HCl, we've got a proton here, right? This proton is our H. And this proton is bonded to a nonmetal, right? So I'm just going to put a note here that it's bonded to a nonmetal. All right, so this would be hydrochloric acid. This is the acid on the inside of your stomach. It helps you digest food. All right, let's take a look at a different type of acid. So the second type of acid is a little bit different. It's still bonded to a non-metal, right? We've got a proton here and it's bonded to nitrogen and oxygens and whatnot. Um, however, it's a polyatomic ion, not just one atom, right? Bonded to a polyatomic ion group, meaning when it's kicked off, it becomes a polyatomic ion. All right, so it's not a polyatomic right now, is what I'm saying, but once it loses that proton, it then becomes a polyatomic ion. Versus up above, chlorine, when it falls off, becomes chloride. That's not a polyatomic ion, that's just a singular atom. Right, so the, that's the main difference between these two groups. So let's go through and break these down, and we'll talk about how to name situation one first. Okay, so let's take a look at just a simple example. In fact, this is the one I already did. So HCl. So if we predicted the name of HCl, based on our previous chapter. Let me zoom out a little bit. We would first start out with the hydrogen, right? And we wouldn't call it monohydrogen. Um, we don't use mono in front of the first group. We only include mono after the second group. So we would predict this to be, you know, just hydrogen. And then we would say hydrogen monochloride. All right, so this is what I taught you in the previous chapter. It's not quite right for acids. So let me show you what we're gonna do. First, we're going to switch this to hydro. Okay. So we'll just make a little note here that we're gonna switch hydrogen to hydro. Hydro is just code for hydrogen in chemistry. All right, and then next, we're going to eliminate both the space and the mono prefix. So no prefixes for this. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to pull down this chloro or chlor group, I should say, after the hydro. So it would be hydrochlor, and then we're going to get rid of this IDE suffix, and we're going to switch it for an ic acid. All right, so this would be the full formal name of HCl. It would be hydrochloric acid when it's dissolved in water, right? So it is a little confusing. Um, the book breaks it down into numbered steps, but I like showing it this way. Just remember you switch hydrogen to hydro, you take the root of your nonmetal, which in this case is chlor, and then you add an ic acid suffix at the end. So not too bad. All right, so let's take a look at situation number two. All right, in situation number two, if you remember, we have polyatomic ions. And I'm gonna do some easier ones first. So, so I'll do situation two, part A. And part A is going to have no phosphorus 
or sulfur. Okay, so let's do some example ones. So down here, I'm going to write HNO3. That's going to be my acid. So what I would do is I would first look at my polyatomic ion, and I would try to determine what this is. Okay, and there's a good table in your book. I believe it's table 4.7. Let's just kind of paste that in right now. Okay, so I'll put that underneath here. And I would look for this in the table. So in the table, you can see that we've got NO3. That's nitrate, right? Okay, so this would be NO3 minus is the polyatomic ion. And that would be nitrate. Okay, but we're not quite done yet. We're not just gonna call this hydrogen nitrate or hydronitrate. That's not what we do with polyatomic ions. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're going to swap the eight ending to an ic acid. So let's go ahead and change this. So this would just be nitric acid. So not too bad. We just want to swap out that root to indicate that it's an acid, not an ion. So not too bad there. Okay, and let's try another one now. So in this next one, it's going to look similar, but rather than HNO3, I'll do HNO2. So just like before, I'll take a look at my polyatomic ion group, and I'll try to find it in my table. Well, this time, it's over here on this side. And we can see that this group, when it gets kicked off as a polyatomic ion, is NO2 minus. And the name for this is nitrite. So you can see that the suffix is going to be a little bit different. It ends up being an ITE. So if you've got an ITE suffix, you don't change it to an ic acid. Instead, what you do is you change it to an us acid. So this would be nitrous acid. So that's the main difference here is you do have to pay attention to the suffix. So let's just make a note here. So eight goes to ic acid. We're down here, it goes to us acid. That way we can differentiate HNO3 from HNO2. I know it is kind of nitpicky. I'm not the one that made up all these rules, <laughs> so don't get angry at me if you have a hard time with these. I oftentimes struggle with them too, and I have to check my notes, um, especially with some of the less common acids. All right, so now let's go to part B. And part B is going to be a situation where we have sulfur or phosphorus. Okay, so let's take some situations here. And in the first one, I'm gonna do H2SO4. Okay, so same idea, I'm gonna take this polyatomic ion and if we go ahead and we look at our chart, we could go up here and we could find it. It looks to me like it's gonna be down here, sulfate, SO4 two minus. So I'll go ahead and write that down. SO4 two minus is the sulfate ion. And what we need to do is kind of a two step change. So down here, we can see we've got the ATE suffix, right? So we want to change that to an ic acid. So that will be step one. So it'd be sulfic acid at this point. But sulfic kind of sounds funny. In fact, let's put that in our notes. At least it sounds funny to a chemist. So what we end up doing next is we wanna to try to change this a little bit to sound better. So what ends up happening is we put in a UR before the IC. And let me show you what that looks like. So it'd be sulf UR IC acid. So it would be sulfuric acid. 
So the UR is simply added to sound better. All right. So as you can see with sulfur, it is important to remember that the same rules as part A apply, <coughs> but you need to add in that UR to kind of polish things up. All right, I did mention phosphorus has something similar. So let's take a look at phosphorus. So H3PO4. Well, if we look at this, we've got this PO4 group. That would be our polyatomic ion. So let's go ahead and try to find that in our table. And PO4 is PO4 three minus, that's phosphate. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Is phosphate. All right, so again, we've got this ATE suffix, which means we need to change this to an ic acid. So let's go ahead and plug in the ic acid replacement. All right, but just like before, this sounds funny to most chemists. All right, and so instead of adding a UR, we add an OR. Whoops, this should be an O here. So this would be FOS4 ic acid. So the OR is added after phosphor to make it, or after phosp to make it sound better. So added to sound better. I know naming was one of my least favorite parts of chemistry. So it's gonna be something where I just want you to know the real basic parts of it. We're not gonna get into the nitty gritty details. Um, in fact, there's a big international organization um, that meets every few years to argue over naming and stuff like this, but it's not really what I'm into. That's just arguing over semantics. So if you can get these basic rules, um, you'll be set, especially if you're going to go into a healthcare field. All right. I hope that helps, but let me know if you have any questions.